right, good morning. Uh, my name is Tom Tiddens. I'm supervisor of Plant Health Care at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And welcome to Butterflies and Blooms. To run this display, we need to have at least four staffing people at doorways at all times. That's the minimal we can have. We need to have one person stationed at this uh, um, entrance door. We need to have another person stationed at the emergency exit. And we need to have two people stationed at the exit vestibule. I'm going to talk to you today about some of the uh, containment procedures. Um, this is really a display of butterflies from various regions of the world like Costa Rica, Africa, the Philippines. And these butterflies are not indigenous to our area, so it's real important that they stay in our display and don't get out uh, in, into our environment. And I'm going to take you through three different stations today and talk about uh, some of the containment things we need to do. And this is all guided by the, the, the USDA. Uh, as far as uh, with some of the containment procedures. Right now we're standing in, in the entrance vestibule and uh, it's really important that when people come into the display that uh, they come into the vestibule, doors are closed behind them, and uh, then there's another set of doors over here, um, and this set of doors will bring them into the display. We never want to have both sets of doors open at the same time. Uh, visitors will line up outside the display. They'll often get some instructions uh, outside the, the, the display, but the person here will motion and allow a group to come into the vestibule. Once the group is in the vestibule, the doors will be closed behind them, and uh, then we can go ahead and open up the door and let them go into the, into the display. Okay, uh, now I've come into the display and I'm standing just inside uh, the, the display, and I want to show you the uh, uh, these are the freezer curtains, and uh, again, when the visitors come in, first we'll make sure the outer doors are closed, and if there's two people working that were signaled okay to open the door, we'll go ahead and open the door. Really important, there are two sets of doors here. We can only open one door at a time. The only reason there are two doors here is that it's a fire code. So we'll open the door, let the group come into this display. They need to walk through the freezer curtains, and these freezer curtains will help keep butterflies from slipping out. You can also see up top here, this is something called an air curtain, and it blows air down. So if butterflies fly towards this door, they'll get blown, they'll get blown away from the door by the, by the, by the air curtain. Um, one thing we need to occasionally watch out for is sometimes up here, butterflies may actually get stuck on the air curtain. If that happens, we just turn it off real quick and brush them off. And every, everything will be fine. But that's one of the, another one of our containment features: the freezer curtains, the air curtain, the vestibule, and all these things go hand in hand to helping with containment. These butterflies, as we talked about, and we'll talk about more, really need to stay in this this display. Okay, um, I've now moved to the next uh, kind of position that we, are, we we staff. We always have staffing at least one person. Uh, at the entrance vestibule, and we always have to have one person. This is actually our emergency exit. Uh, no one will ever be, other than a staff person, going out these doors. But it's really fire code that we have to have uh, an, an, an exit door, and it needs to stay unlocked all the time. And now I'm, I'm near the uh, exit of the display, and this is one of the most important positions. There's always going to be two people working this area. One person will be stationed approximately where I'm at here, and there'll be another person just inside the vestibule. This is one of the most important stations because uh, people are exiting the displays. We don't want any hitching butterflies to get out on anyone. So at, at this point, uh, we'll have people, we'll allow people to come into the vestibule in little groups and they'll have to walk through the air curtain. The air curtain will be blowing butterflies off them. Uh, they'll walk through the freezer curtains that'll help brush them off as well. And also the person at this doorway needs to kind of look around the doorway and make sure there aren't any butterflies that can uh, want to sneak out. And I see right here I've got a butterfly that's right on the doorway. So I'm going to want to carefully move him back into the uh, display. They're not always the easiest thing because they don't always cooperate. But we just don't want butterflies hanging around the doorway. So that's one of the things the person at this doorway does. Keep push the butterflies away. Watch the visitors as they're coming to the door. Make sure they don't have any hitchhikers on their shoulders or on the back. Uh, and ask them to kind of brush them off. Then we'll look to the interior person and they will give the signal that the exterior doors are closed. Then we'll move this little group that's been kind of uh, inspected a little bit into the vestibule. We'll close the doors here and uh, then we'll inspect them a little more thoroughly in the vestibule. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, we're at the last station here, and this is the exit vestibule, and this is the most crucial spot of the whole display where we actually will 
Uh, if there are any hitching butterflies on people, we'll, we'll really catch it here. And uh, so basically, uh, the, the person stationed here will be working real closely in tandem with the person who's going to be just inside the doorway. Um, once people are ready to come in, uh, the person who would be myself will make sure the doors, the final exit doors are closed. I'll give the signal to this person, okay, go ahead and bring them in. We'll open the door. And again, only one door uh, to open at a time. We'll let, we'll let them in. We'll close the door. So now we've got a group of maybe four or five, six people in this area. That'd probably be about the max, about, about six or so. And uh, I'm gonna have them actually, uh, we've got the mirrors here and another mirror on the other side. And I want them to stand in front of the mirrors and do a full 360 and look at themselves. Also, I wanna look at them as well and make sure they don't have any hitchhiking butterflies again this is the most crucial spot and if someone's wearing loose uh, like a, a jacket or has a, a big purse ask them to lift up their purse or look under their jacket in, 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 a, in a sensible way um, I, I kind of joke that this is sort of like the uh, TSA or uh, this is kind of the butterfly uh, uh, type thing of the airport we really need to make sure that we don't have any butterflies getting out on people so once they've inspected themselves I've inspected them I make sure that we're not letting another group in. I'll give this group the okay and they can exit the display. Once they're outside the display and we close the final set of doors, I can signal back to this person to move the next group in. Um, one thing that's real important, if we ever do get a butterfly in this vestibule area or in the entrance vestibule, we need to signal everyone to, we've got a butterfly in the vestibule, but at that point we stop all the lines. Um, as I talked about before, we'll get a net, we'll net it, get it back in, in, inside the display. Really, really important. So the person at this display really needs to kind of be on the ball. And that's one of the reasons why we rotate people through different stations as far as our volunteers, because the people in this area really need to be very, very attentive and we kind of mix things up. And sometimes it gets a little warm, so we've got a stool here for you to be, be comfortable. Um, and it gets real hot on and in the summer, so let's make sure that we take care of ourselves as well and have, have water in here. This display again tends to get really, really warm, but uh, the station is just so important. We need to be really, really attentive. This is the kind of the last spot to make sure we don't have any hitchhikers getting out because again, these butterflies are non-native. If on the rare occasion a butterfly escapes into the entrance or exit vestibule, what we do is re very quickly get the butterfly net, which is actually a telescoping net because the vestibule is very tall, and we shut down all four exit doors into the display and actually out of the, the exit and entrance vestibule as well. And one of the employees, either staff or volunteer, uses the telescoping net to very quickly try to, uh, try to catch a butterfly. So one of the, an excellent tip on how to catch a butterfly, they usually go right to the top, unfortunately, so you just want to extend your butterfly net as far as you need to. And if you can, just catch it against some mesh and just bring it down slowly. That is the best way to do it. Trying to catch it in midair looks ridiculous and is rather futile. In the rare, rare occurrence that a butterfly was to get out and not be caught, um, we need to be sure and pass the word along that this has happened and probably the best thing to do would be contact the horticultural attendant in the display and let uh, him or her know that uh, a butterfly has gotten out and actually some physical description of what kind of butterfly would be great um, and what they would do would be to call myself the containment director. Okay, we're now standing actually outside the display. I know we've talked about the uh, main three areas of staffing for containment, but actually outside the display is where visitors quite often will get some of their first instructions. Uh, to my right here is the ticket booth where they'll get their tickets. They'll line up along here, and then groups of about six will be allowed into the vestibule, sort of as we've talked about. But uh, right here quite often we'll have a volunteer giving them some basic instructions. Uh, uh, some things we don't allow in the display would be like, like strollers, we don't allow tripods for cameras, strollers stay outside, no food or drink inside there. We also like to give them a little bit of butterfly uh, uh, info. Um, we, we ask them not to touch the butterflies, not to pick them up. If one lands on them, that's okay, but if they don't want it on them, they should be careful. If they don't want to swat it, they can just gently kind of brush it off. And then also as they walk through the display, they need to be really careful. We've got a lot of butterflies uh, that like to land on the ground. So they need to be careful when, when they're walking. So 
quite often we'll have some of someone stationed out here to give them a little uh, instruction uh, before they even enter the, the vestibule. Hi, I'm Courtney and I'm the seasonal horticulturalist that works with the butterflies in the Butterflies and Blooms Display House. Uh, this is the pupa room, um, specifically in the back there, and right here we call the emergence chamber, where we keep all the chrysalids and cocoons for our butterflies and moths. We get 300 to 500 chrysalid in a week in shipments that we receive on Fridays. All the butterflies that we receive are bred on butterfly farms, uh, so they're never found in the wild and they are raised for this purpose and this purpose only. And so what they are is just individual chrysalids, what is commonly referred to as a cocoon. And then it's my responsibility to open the box as quickly as possible because we don't want the butterflies to be in there longer than we have to because it's hot in the box and they can emerge in there. And then we hot glue gun them to these wooden dowels and place them in this chamber where we create a super humid and hot environment. 80% humidity and 80% or 80 degrees Fahrenheit is what we're aiming for. And then when the butterflies are ready and the, and the moths, they emerge like this blue morpho did this morning. Um, they usually emerge in the morning. Uh, we don't get much emergence at all in the afternoon, maybe one or two. And they're kind of, they're nothing I would count on. But as soon as the sun hits this glass in the morning, 7.30 to maybe 10.30, lots of butterflies emerge. Uh, it takes them just a couple seconds to come out of their chrysalid and as soon as they do, they hang on to their chrysalid and stretch their wings out so the wings can dry. And as soon as the wings are dry and they fly around in here, we, I release them. Um, I usually release twice a day at 10 o'clock and at 2 o'clock, but that really depends on if the butterflies are ready. On our four feeding dishes inside the butterfly house, we have slightly rotten fruit uh, and blue Gatorade in the center dish and uh, they drink it with what is called a proboscis. It's basically a straw-like feature that they suck up all the juices with. And they like to sit on this sponge and kind of dip into the crevices with, uh, with the proboscis and drink out the Gatorade. Same thing with the plums we have and also the mangoes. Uh, they have no chewing mouth parts, uh, anything that can be broken down into the juices and the sugars that the butterflies need. There are a couple main differences between butterflies and moths. Uh, the first and probably most obvious are their antenna. Butterfly have straight antenna with a club at the end, and moths have a pretty distinctive feathered antenna. It looks just like a feather uh, or like a fish bone. Um, when moths land, they usually keep their wings open, and when butterflies land, they usually close their wings up right away, unless it's an overcast day and they're trying to collect some heat. But those are two really good ways to tell the difference. And then the most, most maybe the most obvious is uh, that moths are mostly nocturnal and butterflies uh, fly during the daytime. The fluid that's coming out of the butterfly's body right now is called merconium fluid and it's a, just a birthing fluid. And this butterfly just emerged seconds ago and that's actually how fast it happens, it's just in a couple seconds. And you can see all the fluid that is still in his abdomen, which he's gonna redistribute through his body by flapping his wings in a few, within a few minutes. And now a species like this, which is the blue morpho that is a little bit bigger, is going to take maybe 45 minutes up to two hours to dry full uh, and, and straighten their wings fully. Um, sometimes it's longer on sunny days, sometimes it's shorter on overcast days, but you don't want to release the butterflies before they're ready to fly. So he'll just hang there on his chrysalid until he's ready and his wings are going to probably quadruple in size, as we'll maybe see. So. They don't actually grow in this stage, they just redistribute the, the fluid in their body. So they're the same size they were in the chrysalid, um, they, they just kind of unfurl 